Hi, we are going to look at paragraph 3.7 in this video. Paragraph 3.7 is on missed payments and changes in interest rate. In the previous two paragraphs, we looked at them separately. In 3.5, we looked at missed payments and in 3.6, we looked at changes in interest rate. And now we're going to combine the two. And we're go going to do that by way of looking at example 44. Example 44 is a follow-up from examples 42 and 43. Um, and in example 42, we looked at missed payments. In example 43, we looked at in changes in interest rate. And now we're going to do both of them simultaneously. So again, we've got a loan of 10,000 rands at an interest rate of 18% per annum compounded monthly. And then it is to be repaid in 24 equal monthly installments. And then we assume that payments from T7 to T9 are missed. And then at T8, the interest rate changes from 18% per annum to 15% per annum. And we need to make an adjustment for the change of interest rate um, and also to compensate for the three missed payments. Um, just a Note here that in example 43, where we looked at changes in interest rate, the interest rate changed from 18% to 21%. So this um, example is just slightly different because the interest rate changes from 18% to 15%. Okay, so here we've got the timeline. We've got our three missed payments as well as the change in interest rate at T8. Um, and now we would like to know what the equal payments from T10 to T24 should be. Okay, whenever you get a, a problem like this, there's no single way of solving this. Um, and you have to treat each of these problems separately. But you have enough skills um, acquired, you have acquired enough skills by now that you should be able to do that. So I think before you, we've, before we continue this video and before you look at the rest of the notes, I want you to see whether you would be able to find um, a solution to this problem, the different steps you will take to solve for this problem. Okay, so if you gave yourself a little time to try and solve that, um, we can look at the four steps here on the slide, and there might be other ways of solving this same problem. Yours might look different, but this is one way of solving this problem. So the first step would be to find the outstanding balance one time period before the missed payment. So that would be to find the outstanding balance at T6. Okay, and why do we cal calculate the missed payment at T6? It's because um, an annuity always starts one time period before the first payment, in this case, the missed payment. So that is why we want to get the outstanding balance one time period before the first missed payment. Then in the second step, we will move that outstanding balance from T6 to T8 using the original interest rate. Then in step three, we will move that outstanding balance from T8 to T9 using the, the changed interest rate. And then in the last step, in step four, we will use the outstanding balance at T9 as the present value of a new loan and use that to calculate the payments. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, and for the first step then, we would like to get the outstanding balance at T6. So again, we make use of the retrospective method. Okay, so that's the outstanding balance at T6. And now we want to move that outstanding balance from T6 to T8. So we move it two time periods.
Okay, that is the um, balance now at T8. Now from T8 we move to T9 and we're going to use the changed interest rate to move our outstanding balance one time period. Okay, the important thing to note here is that we are now working with the changed interest rate. So we use the new interest rate to get the balance at T9. And then finally, in the last step, we will use this balance as a present value of a loan to get the equal payments. Okay, so the equal payments from T10 to T24 will then be 600 rands and 10 cents. Just two things to note here. Uh, first of all, my K is equal to uh, 15. How did I get that 15? I take the end of the annuity minus the start of the annuity. So it's 24 minus 9 to give me the 15. And then the other thing is, please just note here, there seems to be a mistake in the um, notes so there you ha must have it to the power minus one and that will give you the correct answer okay if you've done this you can do the exercises at the back of your notes and um, the exercises on section 3.7 to 3.8 on page 94 and you can do exercises one to four which are um, based on paragraph 3.7